Receiving simulator transmission. Uploading transmitted feed. Initializing playback sequence. Log execute. Hey everyone, Cypher here, and welcome back to Cypher Plays Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelists of the Roses. In the last episode, we faced down Jasper Dice Tutor at Le Mans and managed to defeat his Exodia stall strategy by busting through his bunker with Earthshaker. This time, we will be challenging who I consider to be the hardest opponent on the uh, White Rose campaign, Bakora, here at Renee. However, before we get into it, I would like to quickly go over who, who he is in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. So, Bakora slash Yami Bakora. Uh, Bakora is one of Yugi's friends, a lesser friend than Taya, Tristan, or Joey. Uh, he is a holder of a Millennium item, the Millennium Ring, which has the ability to find whatever the user is looking for. Uh, in particular, though, this Millennium item was possessed by an evil spirit that was basically the big bad of the first series, Zork Necrophades, I think his name was exactly, I don't really remember. Uh, basically, he created as a aspect, uh, the spirit of the ring was basically created as an aspect of the, of Zork that, uh, was set to just try and make it so that Zork could take over the world again, even though uh, Yami Yugi sealed the magic away. Anyway, with that covered, let's get right on into this. So you're the one they call the Rose Duelist. I'm Bakora, a retained card warrior. It was a time when some knew me as Jack Cade or Mortimer. You stand on Celt soil, where card dueling has passed on for generations, or has been passed on for generations. In particular, my family has mastered the art of the dark duel. Well, shall we begin? All right. Now you're aside from that extremely low death cost. I believe the lowest death cost in the game. This field is very much why Bakora is the. Is one of the most difficult opponents. A lot of forest terrain and a lot of crushed terrain. You can't just go at him willy nilly. He's got plenty of plant monsters, as his deckmaster Dark Plant will show, and they can make good use of the forest terrain. If you have the card Man Eater, which I don't, know, I haven't shared the password for because I don't intend to use it. Uh, you definitely want to consider making use of it here. Anyway, I'm going to start off by uh, using Gorgon's Eye. And the reason you want to use Man Eater is because it destroys any monster that's on Forest Ring. It's also a good card to use against Weevil since his uh, deck is, uh, his field is all Forest Ring with a few Wasteland patches. But uh, that's another thing right there that we just saw that makes Bakora kind of annoying. His deck leader's level is so high that he can actually make use of the leader ability for low level plants to restore 50 life points at the start or at the end of each of his turns which makes him a bit annoying to fight. However, with this, we should be fine. Now then, let's just start off. I should keep my Celtic Guardian, and this thing's permanently spellbound, so we can just destroy it with my Celtic Guardian and get at least a bit of a lead on him now. And we'll just have to go from there. Luckily, all of his monsters are fairly weak, so they can survive in the crushed terrain. But this is still going to be kind of troublesome, to say the least. But we'll see what we can do.
Let's actually throw out this Eat Gaboon. And we'll just keep Dream Clown right there for right now. That probably wasn't the best choice, because now my deck leader can be attacked directly, but... Oh well. We're just going to want to move in quick and hit him hard and hit him fast. So let's just go here and then summon something. Uh. Oh, okay. His He's got... Uh, he's got the same level deck leader as me, and a rock monster summoned against a plant monster that's close to his deck leader will be automatically destroyed, so gotta watch out for that. There aren't that many rock monsters, so I didn't really think about it, but yeah, that is a bit dangerous. Well, can't do that, so let's just go forward with this. Not the most damage, but it'll at least get us a little something. And let's see what to do. Well, gotta make use of whatever monsters we can. Anything to offset the life point recovery that he's got going on. And Ikaboon triggers, thankfully. Destroy that barrel, Lily. Now, let's, let's quickly place this here so that he can't summon there and we'll have to move. Okay, that was likely to happen, but I think I can't come back from. And now we'll just put... Sword Stalker right here, so if he kamikazes into that, we can just destroy him. And if he doesn't, well, he's gonna... If he doesn't destroy himself here, he'll just be done by the end of this turn. Which I don't figure that he'll... That he'll die here because he can't really do anything now. So that was actually fairly quick. Really this battle is only difficult if you aren't very good at working with low level monsters or don't have anything strong to kind of pressure him into a corner, but luckily I did. Really, the most annoying part about this is that you have to lower your deck cost so much when before this you were facing fairly high leveled opponents, but or high deck cost opponents, so only slightly irritating. Anyway, got a few monsters off of him, not that we'll be making use of any of them.
No. No way. I warn you, your next field of battle will be your last. Be prepared to meet your maker. All right, well, with that, we've secured the seventh Red Rose card. And after long awaited, after a long amount of time, we've finally reached our final stop. Rest to face Henry Tudor slash Yugi. However, I will be saving that for next time. Now that this is a bit of short, bit of a shorter episode, but I really need to beef up my deck quite a bit, considering how much I had to lower it just to face Bakora. And before I do that, which I will be saving for off screen, because after showing what it was like with Jasper Dice Tutor last episode, uh, I really don't want to go through it on screen again. So. I'm going to be ending things off here, but before that, let's quickly go over who Bakora represents in the War of the Roses. Or, rather, I should say who he represented before the War of the Roses, because, as he said himself, his he goes by the name Jack Cade or Mortimer. Jack Cade not, is a well-known figure from before the War of the Roses, he led a he led the 1450 Kent revolt against Henry the Seventh's father Henry the Sixth, which ultimately he shows that he doesn't exactly have the Lancastrians' best interests at heart, and the fact that he's shown with the Yami Bakura look to him clearly shows that he's more embodying the spirit of the Millennium Ring than the actual Bakura. So that kind of leads me to theorizing that this Bakora or Jack Cade is influencing Henry VII in darker ways that honestly, from what we know of history with how the Henry VII's rule had to constantly put down rebellions and a lot of paranoia, you can kind of see where that comes from if you go by the, his lens of how event of who he surrounded himself with, especially seeing as the chorus seems to be pretty high up there, being the second to last opponent on the White Rose campaign for getting all the Rose cards. Anyway, with that all accounted for, I believe I will end things off here. I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, stay gold. Playback sequence terminated. Transmission disconnected.